Till we get a crown, I don't talk. Yeah. Just that crown talk. Yeah. Me or my don't want to be like Nino Brown now. Nah. Cause this that king talk. Ooh. Real life king talk. Ooh. Like Solomon, I see things clearly like a greenhouse. The wordplay can't get colorful. The scriptures cutting you the butter too. Not to mention, we a living legend. Don't know what to do when a myth is standing right in front of you. You better watch and just take notes. The father sent the flood to the rainbow. But his son coming back with fire. So it ain't gonna be no more scary. Ghost. Let me tell you what the prophecy, unparalleled with the prophecies, stopping Fritz, bodies in the street, my people property in this monopoly, call it America, where the dreams come true, where nightmares and the demons come to, the side of my agenda, I don't give a damn if you offended. Cause I just want to show you, they push, so they push that narrative that the Confederate soldiers were heroes for fighting to keep slaves enslaved. That enslaved people were actually happy and there was no need to mess with the social construct or mess with the society and the lifestyle of, of Southerners. And that slavery was not the root cause of the war. Everything revolved around the Israelites. The world was made for our sakes. You understand that? Get that in Jeremiah 15 and 33. Just for the, the Negro that might be watching this trying to argue for the white man. No, we, it wasn't the root cause, brother. God said we in the midst of everything. Everything got something to do with the Israelites. Yeah, chapter 50 and verse 33. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. So we oppressed together. Northern and southern kingdom. Go ahead. And all that took them captive. And everybody that takes us captives to these different lands, read. Held them fast. Do what? Held them fast. They hold, hold them fast means hold you tight. They don't want to let you go. Why is he going to say that? Read. They refuse to let them go. What the Bible say? They refuse to let them go. They didn't want to let us off the plantation. That's why they went about to rewrite history. That's why after the Civil War, what came? The Ku Klux Klan, Jim Crow laws, black codes, like vacancy laws. All these things were put in place. Why? To keep us enslaved. That's why when Black Wall Street started to show any type of progress, they said, bomb that. Destroy that. Don't give them niggas no light. Don't give them niggas no hope. Kill them. Destroy everything that they have. Destroy their mental makeup. You understand? What you got, Oscar? Go ahead. So, so you saying back in the back during that time they weren't telling us to go back to Africa? Hell no. They hey, they say they want us to go back to Africa now, but that ain't true. The Bible said it ain't true. The Bible said they refused to let us go. They don't want us to go back to Africa. Then who gonna pay? Who gonna who gonna be their janitors? You understand that? And that's no offense on a brother. That's I always have to say that because we know our brothers in captivity. We trying to get, we trying to do what we can do to take care of our family. But I'm just saying that who gonna do the low grade jobs that they consider filth? They're like, oh, I wouldn't touch that. Who gonna do it? We the ones that are doing it. We are the the um the hardest, most hardest working people on the planet Earth. Before they start talking about we was slave, before we was lazy and all that stuff. How the hell we was lazy and America got rich off of us? You understand? We was never lazy. You understand? They put that narrative out there in the open. So go from there. Go back to the video now. We can play it. Hopefully we can get through this video. Y'all know how I be Slavery going. was not the root cause of the war. The Lost Cause is one of the most notoriously effective efforts to rewrite history. And it was done by the losing side. So how did it become so deeply rooted in Southern memory? Blame the United Daughters of the Confederacy. The, the UDC was founded in Nashville in 1894 to preserve Confederate culture for generations to come. The women who made up the group descended from elite antebellum families, Look and this. they used their social and political clout to spread the pro-Southern version of the war as real history. You've probably seen their efforts to honor the Confederacy, but maybe you didn't know it was the UDC. They're the ones who covered the Southern landscape with memorials for Confederate leaders and soldiers. They used their fundraising and lobbying skills to pressure local governments into erecting monuments in prominent public spaces like courthouses and state capitals. Installed here next to the state capitol by the United Daughters of the Confederacy. The United Daughters of the Confederacy donated this memorial to the city back in the 30s. They put them along roadsides and in parks. Any place that was remotely relevant to the Confederacy was memorialized. By the early 20th century, the UDC had 100,000 members. Look at this. spread all over the country, but mostly in former Confederate states. Look at this. And there's a reason they grew so quickly during that time. So we're 
talking about roughly three decades after the end of the war, and the Confederate veterans themselves are beginning to die off. So there is this push to find ways to commemorate it, because the big challenge by 1900 was there's a new generation of white Southerners being born, and they never experienced the, the war years. That push is visible. Most of the Confederate monuments were erected during the UDC's height of influence. There's a rhetoric around monuments that we want to get the this thing built before all of that generation has died off. And the reason we want it is to teach future generations about those men. Dr. Pause Karen it. Cox wrote the book. Pause it. Bruh. So as you see, this white woman behind her man, we get a lot of flack from the sisters about certain things that we're trying to do in Israel United in Christ. And we get a lot of flack from the black woman when we go out here and teach on the street. They hate to see us in order and teaching our people. But this white woman jumped behind her man very quickly. And during this height of their influence, what they call them, the, 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 the daughters of the Confederacy, the United Daughters of Confederacy, they made sure that their fathers was able to go out and do what they need to do. They made sure that their fathers were memorialized. You understand that? So I told you, y'all keep thinking that it's only the white man. His woman is in on it too. The Bible said the whole nation of Esau is the devil. Not just his men. And you brothers want to run out and get married to these women. Like the brother that's, what's his name, Daniel Cameron? Daniel Cameron, the, the, the attorney general for, for in Louisville, Kentucky, that didn't pro prosecute the, uh, the, the cops in the Breonna Taylor case? He married to a she-devil. And why you think he hates his people like that? Who taught him that? Give me that real I know we ain't going over there, but give me Deuteronomy 7, verse 3 and 4 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3 and 4. This white woman behind her man wholeheartedly. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 3. Read. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. So the Bible said we ain't supposed to make marriages with these other nations. But our brother, stupid, goofy as hell, do it over and over and over and over, thinking they get some political clout. But guess what? Piss off and say something wrong. Start saying Jesus Christ black. Start saying we the Israelites and her people the Edomites and they going into slavery. Why she holler rape on her own husband? Why she call her granddad and her uncle near who the DA and can get you law get you uh, unlawfully put in jail? Why she plant drugs on you? See the devil the Bible speak of just like her man. And y'all brothers crazy as hell want to keep marrying these women. Read what you got, bro. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son. So God said, Don't give your daughter to his son. Read. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy and son. And you don't give his daughter to your son. Go ahead. For they will turn away the Thy son from following me. Because they're going to turn away the sons of God from following the most high God. That's what that's saying. Just like they did King Solomon. So you keep thinking that these Edomite women ain't in on it. Oh, they in on it. The Bible said they hold nation and the nation the board of wickedness. Malachi 1 and 4 real quick. Sometimes we be like, oh, no, man, it's just, it's just a man. No, 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 bro. You sleep. Malachi 1 and 4. The book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 4. I got me a Beckett dog, man. Look at that Beckett dog. Yeah, I see that dog over there. I see that animal that you uh, run, run around with your hand around. You're supposed to have a leash on the dog. Read what you got. Whereas Edom saith, we are in poverty. So the Bible says Edom saith. We read earlier what Edom was Esau. Where Edom saith, read. We are impoverished. We are what? We are impoverished. We are impoverished. This is going into when? The Caucasus Mountains, Right. During the time, the dark ages, when they were going through much oppression and much poverty in those mountains with lack of resources. Go ahead. But we will return and build the desolate places. But they came back in the Renaissance period and built the desolate places, right? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. They said they shall build, but I will throw down. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. The Bible says you're going to call them the border of wickedness. Read. And the people. And what? The people. And what? The people. Not just the man. The people. The Bible said the people. Read. Against whom the Lord have indignation for forever. God said he got indignation against the people forever. The people forever. God got a controversy. God got a problem with the whole nation of Esau. Not just they men. Not just who you see in the forefront. I never knew this. Before watching this video, I never paid attention to the United, uh, the United uh, Daughters of Confederacy. I never paid attention to that. Did you know anything about that? What about you, Oz? I ain't never paid attention to that in my life. You understand? Go back to the video. Book on the UDC, and I asked her if it was fair to say the group established the lost cause as historical fact in the South. 
Oh my God, yeah. They were the leaders of the lost cause into the 20th century, and they made it a movement about vindication. Just to give you an idea of how effective they were, they successfully lobbied for a Confederate memorial in Arlington National Cemetery, which U.S. President Woodrow Wilson proudly unveiled to a cheering crowd. Now that's influence, right? Monuments are the least of what they did. Uh, what? I mean, they, they are the most visible and tangible, but the work with children was far more influential. It turns out a central UDC objective is shaping how children think about the war and their Southern heritage. One of their most powerful tools, textbooks. Take a look at this pamphlet called A Measuring Rod for Textbooks. It was written by the illustrious Southern historian Miss Mildred Rutherford, an educator, orator, and author of Southern history textbooks. She's also very pro-slavery. The pamphlet announced the very formation of too. a textbook review committee featuring prominent Southerners like five former Confederate generals. This group was committed to spreading the truths of Confederate history, so they instructed school boards to reject any textbooks that did not accord full justice to the South. And they urged libraries to deface every book in their collection that didn't measure up by writing the words unjust to the South clearly on its cover. This pamphlet was shared widely with school boards throughout the South, and UDC-backed committees closely monitored history books to make sure Northern pause, influence... Pause, 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 never pause, pause, pause. Look at this. So it said that they would go out of their way, right, to reject any textbooks that had anything that was against the South. So they went into the school system. So you wonder why we learned about Ulysses S. Grant here in the South, why we learned about Robert E. Lee here in the South, but we never hear about Harriet Tubman. We never hear about Ida B. Wells. We, Ida B. Wells from Holly Springs, Mississippi. Many black people don't even know who that is. We don't know anything about our uh, uh, Fannie Lou Hammer. Hamer, Mega Evers, Charles Evers, his brother who died early this year. We don't hear anything about these men, but we know about uh, Ulysses S. Grant. We know about all these other, these Edomite um, um, Confederate soldiers and, and generals. It said, look, it says, uh, reject a book that speaks of the slaveholder of the South as cruel and unjust to his slaves. These folks, the devil, man, look at this. They literally trying to rewrite history. You understand? It says, reject the textbook that glorifies Abraham Lincoln and vilifies Jefferson Davis. Unless a truthful cause can be found for such glorification and vilification before 1865. They literally went out of their way to make sure that you and I and that all of the young Edomites coming up during that time knew uh, or at least had some type of understanding about the heritage of confederacy. And how that all of their ancestors were against the abolition of slavery, the abolishing of slavery. You can't make this up, man. You can't make this up. That's Psalms 83. Get it real quick. Psalms chapter 83. Want me to skip to verse 4? I'll start at verse 2 real quick. The book of Psalms chapter 83 and verse 2. Read. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. The Bible says our enemies make a tumult. Read. And they that hate thee. And God said, they that hate God, read, have lifted up the head. They've made themselves proud. They become proud. Like this will never be unveiled. Like this will never come out. Like black folks won't ever pick up a book and read. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They have taken crafty counsel against the people of God. Read. And consulted against thy hidden one. That's what this is. This is crafty counsel. This is to keep their bloodline rich in wisdom as far as the Confederacy is, um, is, is uh, concerned. You understand? To make sure that they young kids, that's why you got white folks right now with the Confederate flag on the back of their truck yelling out things like, it ain't got nothing to do with slavery. It's my heritage. Okay, what does the heritage entail? What was going on during that time? Uh, 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 uh. We, did, we own slaves, but we didn't like to own slaves. Wait a minute, then why was you fighting Bruh. the Civil War? You didn't like the hunting slaves, then why are you fighting the Civil War against the North trying to free the slaves? Showing you that that's some bunch of BS. Straight lies. Read it again, verse 3. Verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Bruh, the lady said, listen, the statues is only a small thing. And we're like, no, hell no, not no statue. No, no, no. They went into the school system. They put books out to rewrite history. And, and guess who got those textbooks after the, after the white folks was done using those textbooks throughout the 40s, 50s, and 60s, in the early 1980s, 90s, and 2000s? We were still reading those textbooks down here in Mississippi. We still reading those textbooks now. They even gone so far now to do the 1619 act. What is 1619 plan? What is it called? Make sure I ain't saying it wrong. It's the 1619 project where they want to eliminate any type of any type of rhetoric or any type of understanding or history about the transatlantic slave trade. Now, why in the hell would you want to do that? And that's world history. 
It's the same thing. The, the United Daughters of the Confederacy, they still live today. Because didn't that happen in Arkansas? Isn't that dude like a governor or a senator of Arkansas that's trying to get that done? So who was his ancestors? The slave master in Arkansas. This stuff real, man. This ain't no game. Our people sitting around here, running around here with the damn Confederate flag on their shirts and stuff like this, not knowing that you represent white supremacy. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Go ahead. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Read. For they have consulted together with one consent. What are they? They are confederate against thee. What the Bible say? They are confederate against thee. Now, why God use that word? Why did God say, I'm going to use the word confederate? Then I'm going to put it on their spirit to call their flag the confederate flag. Because this was a Hebrew word, right? Wasn't this written in Hebrew? So the Lord said, whatever that word is in Hebrew, put it on the scholar's mind to say, make sure that word say confederate. They like, Lord, confederate, yeah, confederate. Put that down. Make sure you say confederate. So in 2020, we can look back at the Confederate flag and say, oh, my God, the United Daughters of the Confederacy. Oh, my God, the Ku Klux Klan. The Lord done revealed the secrets to his prophets. You understand that? Go ahead. The Tabernacles of Edom. That's all I want. That's all we're dealing with today. The Tabernacles of Edom. The so-called white man. This is who it's talking about. They are the forefront. They in the forefront of this Confederacy. They are in the forefront of this crafty council. They are in the forefront of cutting our men and our women off from their understanding and wisdom of who they are. They going out of their way to do these things. No, it's just the Democrats, though. That's what they always say down here in the South. Oh, it's the Democrats. They were the one behind slavery. Uh, then why you got a Confederate flag on the back of your truck? Why you got a Confederate flag uh, ingrained on your chest? Hey, find the video of the Edomite that's rapping. You know what I'm talking about? He rapping about America. God bless her. I'm proud to be American. You know what I'm talking about? You seen that? Man, pull that up for me. If you can find that, man, he, he the mice, man. I'm telling you, the devil. Go ahead, Austin. He, got a, he, he rapping for real? He rapping saying, proud to be an American. He I, turk. Man, y'all get that. But while we're getting that, let me pull a script. Go ahead. Go get ahead. Job chapter 8, verse 8. While we're going through this, it's one thing to know, okay, these folks are not about to forget their history. These folks know who they are, what they came, what their forefathers came over here and did. They know their forefathers came over here and took this land. They know that. They know that they had us in slavery. They knows this. So they know their history. They know their forefathers. They know what they did. The Bible tells us we got to know our history and what our forefathers was about. First off, we got to know who we are. So let's read that scripture right there. The book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 8. Come on. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. The Bible telling us to think like, who were we before slavery? Who were we? A lot of people in this day and age don't learn about slavery. Right. We, we are ashamed of that. Fortunately, I, I grew up in a household. My grandma told me right. about us being in slavery and stuff like that. But a lot of that is cut off now. Right. So we don't have that history. Right. Read that again. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Don't be ashamed to know we was in slavery because knowing that, we know by that we are the children of Israel. Right. We the Israelites. That's right. That's Our right. forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's right. Read. And prepare thyself to, to the search of their fathers. We got to prepare ourselves to the search of our fathers. We got to know who our forefathers were before slavery. Because once we know that, we can take our identity back and know all of this is a part of God's plan. And though they raise themselves up, they will be brought down. That's right. And that's the history we got to come back to. But we don't, we don't do that. We run from that. Y'all right. should have dropped the bomb on that. Come on, man. God, come on, man. <laughs> We gotta Come on learn now, dog. Come on, dog. We got to learn out. Never knew in my life anything about the United Daughters of the Confederacy. Never in my life did I ever know anything about that. I didn't see like, okay, look at here. Reject a textbook that omits the tale of the South's heroes and their deeds when the North's heroes and their deeds are made prominent. So they want to say any book that don't give the, give the South the glory of fighting to, to keep our way of life, which is enslaving our ancestors. Anybody that puts a book out like that, reject that book. Don't deal with that book. You can't make this up. This is what your slave master doing behind closed doors while you sleep. Give me Habakkuk 314 real quick. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 14. Watch this. The book of Habakkuk 
chapter 3, verse 14. Real quick, I'm going to show you what your, your forefathers uh, have endured, and I'm going to show you what your, your enemies have put in place. Read what you got. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, and verse 14. So said, then the South lose. You're right, so they lost. They're the only people that lose, but then make it seem like they won. You celebrating the loser. When the white man ever been happy losing? You understand that? He's celebrating. You know why? Because the loser was fighting to keep us enslaved. That's what it was all about. Read what you got. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, and verse 14. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. It said, Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. Go they, ahead. They came out as a whirlwind. They did what, what? What they do? They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. It said, They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. Go ahead. That's going into Christ. Read. Their, their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. What was their rejoicing? They were happy to do what? To devour the poor secretly. We had no idea this was going on. We had no idea that they was putting these things in place to make sure that in the future, their sons and their daughters would hold on to the heritage of slavery. You understand that? We had no idea. Go back to the video now. Let's try to finish it out. We got a few more videos. Go ahead. ...reached classrooms. So the core language of an approved textbook aligned precisely with that of the lost cause. You know, stuff like... The Confederacy lost in the war between the states but Georgia never forgot to honor her Confederate soldiers. History of Georgia was on the UDC's approved list. It was also written by E. Merton Coulter, a self-described Southern historian, and, and historian described white supremacist. Right. They understand that how you educate, who wins the writing game, who wins the, the battle over history, ultimately wins the war. That's the big fight for the UDC. But their work with children went further than the classrooms. The UDC formed an auxiliary group called the Children of the Confederacy, uh -oh. which was designed to get kids born in former Confederate states to actively participate in their version of history. Group Look leaders had kids recite call and response truths from something called the Confederate Catechism. Children up to the age of 18 would compete and be rewarded for memorizing long passages of lost cause rhetoric. So it would be like an after school thing, you know, like that was your club. You would go after school to the meeting of the children of the Confederacy and your leader might teach you songs of the South like Dixie or other songs that were considered Southern patriotic songs. They would have them write essays, go visit the veterans and learn this catechism. Children were also pause it, the pause centerpiece. It, of pause it. Bro, you see what's going on here? Their after school, our after school program is uh, basketball, football, baseball, their after-school program is educating their people on their way of life, on slavery, on hatred, on racism, on confederacy. You understand? For To fight against the abolition of slavery. These are the things that they teaching their children, man. That's why when we bring this scripture out, give me Isaiah, you know what I want, 14? 1421. This is why we bring this scripture out. And people say, man, y'all y'all got to stop teaching. Y'all got to stop reading that scripture. That ain't what God means. No, it's exactly what God means. God know the spirit. The spirit been transferred down from the father, from the grandfather to the father to the son to his son to his son to his son. That's why in 2020 on the reservoir here in Jackson, Mississippi, they having a Trump rally with all Confederate flags. They all on the reservoir in boats. You understand? Because they still fighting for that this to this day. Read what you got, bro. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. Because so the Lord know what he's talking about, man. These Edomites had already had it in their spirit to pass their hatred down to their children. Why do you think their they children hate us? Who taught them to hate us? Their fathers taught them. I'm pointing like this, like you're going down like a damn. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> prepare slaughter for his children. The Bible said we have to prepare slaughter for his children in the future. This is a biblical. This is prophecy. We ain't going to do it. You understand? Because we don't believe in violence. But the Bible says that this will happen in the future. Go ahead. For the iniquity of their fathers. Now, what they got to do with their fathers fighting in the Confederate War? They made sure monuments stayed up. They made sure the legacy was passed down. They made sure the lies was passed down. They made sure the spirit was passed down. That's why God said what he said. Give me Deuteronomy 25 and 17. Deuteronomy 25, verse 17. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25 and verse 17. This ain't nothing new. Read what you got. Remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way. See, the Bible says God told, remember what Amalek did unto thee, by the way. Go ahead. When ye were come forth out of Egypt. When we came out of Egypt, was that not, was that not years and years before that? We walked in the wilderness for 40 years. 
That was at least, at least 40 years before that. At least. Read. How he met thee, by the way. Read. And smote the hindmost of thee. So who was the hindmost of thee? Who was the hindmost of us, y'all? Our women and our children. And the old men and the old women. They was in the back. They weren't fighting the strong men in the front. They killed our women and children in the back. The Lord said, don't forget what they did. Read. Even all that were feeble behind thee. All that were feeble, meaning weak. Read. When thou was faint and weary, and he feared not God. And he didn't fear God to do this. Go ahead. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord thy God had given thee rest from all thy enemies round about, and the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. He said we shall blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Now go to 1 Samuel 15 real quick. You know what I want. Verse 1, 1 Samuel 15 and 1. When did this happen? When did the Lord decide to execute this vengeance? This is hundreds of years later now, right? This is hundreds of years later when the Lord gave a prophecy. Hundreds of years after they actually did this. Watch what God said. Read that. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15 and verse 1. Because somebody may say, y'all inflicting hate. No, we ain't because Israel united reunited in Christ. We always teach. We're not a hate group. We don't inflict violence or hurt on nobody. But we're going to bring out what the scripture says regarding the history of what these people have done to our people and how they still maintain and hold on to it today. Right? Go ahead. Samuel also said unto Saul, Read. The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, uh -huh. over Israel. Read. Now therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Hearken thou to the verse, wor words of the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way. So you think God don't remember? God, Oh, God forgets the atrocities that happened to his people. God don't forget. God ain't a man like us. He don't forget. You understand? So what we're reading is, keep reading. When he came up from Egypt. Wait a minute. When he came up from what? From Egypt. Didn't Deuteronomy, the prophecy, the Lord told Moses to tell the people, don't forget what they did to you because I'm going to cause judgment to come upon them later. Read. Now go, now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep. Camel and ass. So we just reading the scripture. That's what the scripture told Saul to do at that time. The Lord told Saul to do that at that time based on what they did to them earlier. So when we read Isaiah 14, 21, and people say, well, why y'all reading that? It's because it's prophecy that has not happened, that the Lord going to have to handle these people for what they've done to God's people. Go ahead, Austin. Now, I was just back on the video. I don't know if you're going to go back to it. Let's go. Whenever you go back to it. All right. They was teaching their children their history. You can't blame them for that. But we got to understand we must, and it's critical, we teach our children. We pass our not, the knowledge that we have that we are the Israelites down to our children, down to our nieces, our nephews, our generation that's coming behind us. The Bible tells us that. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7. Let's get to it. God instructs us to not forget our heritage. And our heritage is these laws, these commandments. That's our heritage. As we come back to this knowledge and learn this, don't be scared to tell them what Christ looked like according to the Bible. He's a black man. He's not white. No, we don't celebrate Christmas. We celebrate, we celebrate peace of dedication. This is our history. I don't want to tell, you know, is it too early to tell him, you know, he's an Israelite. I know I'm just learning it. No, tell him as soon as he's able to understand. Right. Read the Bible. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 7. Come on. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You see what started the verse above? Uh, what is it, laws? One yes, one. jump there. Jump verse to that. 1. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, uh -huh. that ye might do them in the land where ye go to possess it. All right, stop now. This is what God commanded. He, read it again. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments. Stop. Now jump down. Verse 7. Thank and you. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Unto who? Thy children. Teach the history to your children. Teach our history, this Israelite history, just like the Esau. They're going to teach their history. The kid, you see it in the video. they learn learning Confederate songs. Even when it's a lie, they're going to teach it. Even when it's a lie, they're going to teach it. They learn the Confederate songs, who the generals were that took over these, uh, took over these lands and stuff, uh, who, what these statues really mean, what, what the flag represent, and now they're proud of that. God to us to do the same thing by us knowing we Israelites to teach our children that. And as soon as they're able to understand it and learn it, they need to be taught that. That's all I got, officer. All praise to the Most High. Go back to the video.
So when we read the scripture about the Lord saying, prepare slaughter for his children, but we ain't saying we're going to be the ones that do it, but we just letting you know that God don't forget the past. The Lord does not forget the atrocities and the things that have happened to his people. And we're going to bring it out. Thus saith the Lord. We're going to stand behind the Bible, not our own words. Right? Go ahead. Their community's monument unveilings, like this living flag at the dedication of the Stonewall Jackson Monument in Richmond. Yes, those are school children. Those the are UDC's children efforts that made that flag the up. identities of children who grew up with the lost cause. They made history personal, and that made their story last longer. Generations of generations of children learning that narrative in a variety of ways grow up to be, you know, segregationist in the 50s and 60s. You see this? Because that's been drilled into them since they were children. Pause it. That, that's it right there. It's been drilled in them since they were children. That's it. But yeah, we scared to teach our kids the Sabbath day. Right. We scared to teach our kids to keep the Passover. Right. We ashamed of that for some reason. Hell no, nah, my son, my daughter gonna learn. Look, you're an Israelite. The white man is the devil. The Bible right. speaks of. That's right. Yes, don't come home with no white woman or you ain't gonna stay here. Right. That's right. That's because the Bible says that. Right. That's yes, right. I will teach my kids that. That's right. That's all I got. Hey, get Ezekiel 35 verse 5. Ezekiel chapter 35, verse 5. Because, see, it said that the sons and daughters of the Confederacy that learned under the daughters of the United Daughters of the Confederacy, those kids, when they put these after-school programs in place, when they put these things in place for them to learn about these lies, these blatant lies, when they learn these things, those children were the ones that joined the Ku Klux Klan. Those children were the ones that became political figures to put in place black codes. So they passed that wicked, evil hatred for us down to their children. Let's see what the Bible says there. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 35 and verse 5. Read. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. Read. In the time that their iniquity had an end. Going into what? The Emancipation Proclamation. When our time our iniquity had an end, when we were so-called, quote-unquote, supposed to be released from slavery, they instituted the 13th Amendment, which says that if you can, you are no longer a slave unless you break a, unless you break a law, unless you uh, uh, do some type of crime, which is the reason they put in the black codes, which is the reason they put in the convict leasing, the reason they put in the, um, the vagrancy laws. That's the reason they put all that Jim Crow laws. That was all put in place to put us right back into captivity because they hated the fact that the slaves were being released and free to roam. They didn't like that. Bruh. Oh, we fear them. Oh, he used to be my slave. He might turn on me. He might harm me. That's what they was using there. But the Lord says, no, it was passed down. Give me that. Hold your finger there. We're going to come right back to that scripture. Give me Genesis chapter 27 and verse 41. Genesis chapter 27, verse 41. Bishop brought this out on the Sabbath day. The book of Genesis, chapter 27 and verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob. Do what the Bible say? And Esau hated Jacob. It said Esau hated Jacob. Read. Because of the blessing. Because of his blessing. Read. Wherewith his father blessed him. Hey, you know what that you know what that also goes into? When we left slavery, they knew how hard and how hard of workers we were and how industrious we were. So when we left slavery, they said, look, you see the empire they built for us? Now we got to go out there and till this ground ourselves. Now we got to go out there and pick the cotton ourselves. They're going to go. They're going to buy land. They're going to till the ground. They're going to catch up with us in wealth. We can't let that happen. That was always our blessing. The earth was made for the Israelites. The land was made for the Israelites. So the land would submit to us. When we say we the gods on the earth, y'all don't understand what the Bible is saying. You are the gods on the earth, brothers. You <laughs> sisters are the princesses of the earth. And when God said all things going to obey us, everything going to obey us. It says the trees going to be happening when we rise up. It said all the creatures waiting for the sons of God to be manifest on the planet Earth. You understand that? And as long as you fight against this truth and want to be along with your slave master, are you fearful or you don't believe? You holding back your supremacy. You holding back your wisdom. You holding back your God ruling this earth with 144,000 black men. You understand that? That's what you're holding back. Y'all brothers has got to come up out and stop believing that the so-called white man, which is Esau, according to the Bible, has any love or any admiration for you at all. He only celebrates you when you coon. As right. long as you ain't, if you don't coon, right. he hates your guts. You understand? Finish the scripture out real quick in 41. Also, Levy got something. Go ahead. And, and Esau said in his heart, the oh. days of the morning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. He said, the only reason I ain't going to kill Jacob right now is because we waiting for our father to be buried. The days of our father's death is at hand. But as soon as daddy, as soon as daddy down in that ground, his ass mine. 
He grasps. Now, go back to Ezekiel 35, verse 5, one more time. The book of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 35 and verse 5. Where that because, come from? That noise. Go ahead. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred. Where did perpetual hatred come from? I forgot who Esau's first son was. But he taught his son, hey, we don't like the Israelites. We don't like Jacob, your uncle. We don't like him. You understand? So he taught his kids, hey, we don't like our great uncle Jacob and his sons. We don't like Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and Nephtali. We don't like Dan. We don't like uh, Reuben. We don't like Levi. We don't like Simeon. We don't like them over there. You understand? So they taught their kids. We don't like them. So by the time Amalek was born, when we came out of Egypt, Amalek said, yeah, that's what granddaddy was telling us about. Yeah, we don't like them. Yeah, we don't like them. And Amalek slew us in the wilderness. You got to use wisdom. These are actual people. This is not just stories. This ain't no fairy tale book. These are people. If he hated a Jacob, he taught his kids to hate Jacob. And now we're seeing the same thing now. They taught their kids to hate Jacob. Read it again. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword and the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Read. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. That's prepare slaughter for their children. That's what the Bible is saying. The Lord said, okay, you like blood, right? Okay, I'm going to have blood follow you. Read. And blood shall pursue thee. You understand that? And then it's the same thing he told Cain. Read. Sit thou. Has not hated blood. So you, you, love, you like blood anyway. You like to kill people anyway. You like to take people land anyway. So let's see how, how it fits when it come on to you. That's what the Lord is saying when it reciprocated. Go ahead. Even blood shall pursue thee. And even blood shall pursue thee. Go ahead, I was Now I just wanted to see that video. I didn't know if we're going to get back to it. Yeah, we're going to get back to it. We're going to finish it out. Okay, I'll praise it. But no, I have no. All right, go to um. Go to where you was at. Go, go to where you was at. Go back to where you was at. Ezekiel 35. Verse 5, also. No, Habakkuk 2, I'm sorry. Habakkuk 2 and 5. Bring it up. That's what I want, Habakkuk 2 and 5. I was bringing out about the perpetual hatred. We can't change these folks. Right. We cannot change these folks. They teaching their generation after generation after generation. They teaching them. They teaching them. All right? Let's see what the Bible say about that. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 5. Come on. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keep it. Neither keepeth at home, uh -huh. who enlarged his desire as hell. Verse 4, that's what I want. Verse 4, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. Read that part again. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. When well, you're dealing with these so-called white race, these Edomites, the Bible called them. Right. The Bible say what? Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. They soul not upright in them. So if you're trying to befriend that, you thinking that's going to be changed, you're trying to change the way God created them. Verse 2. Because the officer said every nation on the planet Earth, every nation on the planet Earth has been negatively impacted by this man. He's made some nations rich, but he stepped on a lot of nations' toes. And that's why the Lord said this. Obadiah, verse 2. Obadiah verse 2. This should be your favorite chapter, brother. The book of Obadiah <laughs> verse 2. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Read. Thou art greatly despised. The Bible says Esau is greatly despised. All nations despise this race. You understand that? They just agree with this race. Give me that real quick in Revelation chapter 17. I think it's verse 15. They just agree with this race for the time being. Give me that, Revelation chapter 17 and verse, uh, start at 17. Just go straight to the point. The book of Revelation chapter 17 and verse 17. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. So the Lord said he going to have the other nations agree, be in, uh, what's the word, in harmony, in confederacy with Babylon the Great with America, with the European Union, just for a time, until he puts it on their minds, okay, destroy him now. The 144 has been sealed. Press the button. Then the button going to get pressed, and then there's no more Babylon the Great. There will be no more America. You understand that? Thus saith the Lord. So the, all nations really despise this man. They just dealing with him because God putting it on their spirit to agree with him and to the, to the 144,000 Israelites are raised up to rule this earth again. Then it's going down. Going down. Go back to the video. 
Matter of fact, drop. Yo, no, yo, show that. Go back like 10 seconds, though. Yeah, from learning it. that narrative in a variety of ways, grow up to be, you know, segregationist in the 50s and 60s, because that's been drilled into them since they were children. After World War I, the UDC started losing steam, but the damage was done. The monuments were in place, and the textbooks they wrote remained in Southern classrooms until the late 70s. And the women's hey. group did it all without the right to vote or participate in politics. You can still get glimmers of this. You see that right to vote some BS. The, how was they able to influence President Woodrow Wilson to to put a monument in the middle of one of the uh, of one of the main graveyards to commemorate veterans in in Washington in Arlington I think Arlington was it Arlington Cemetery Arlington Cemetery these women without the right to vote was able to get the president to honor Confederate soldiers how in the hell that happened without Bruh. showing you that voting ain't got nothing to do with nothing. They don't need the right to vote to push their white agenda. The eat white women, I'm telling you, man, the eat white woman, that's the same woman that that um uh put our women into the uh liberation, women liberation, the feminist movement. You understand? Me too movement. That start with the white woman. She just just like her man. Just like him. Hey, I'll Zariah with us. I'll pray to the most high. Put the camera on him, put it in his face right there. Mm-hmm. Right there. I'll Zariah, he joined us. I'll pray. You probably want to say it on the mic. I'm not sure they can hear you. Check, check, mic check. I can't hear myself. He can't hear himself. I can hear you. Check, check. I'll pray. Shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. You got anything? Not yet. Okay. Well, if you get energized over there, jump in. ready. I'll get live. I'll put you on the spot. I'm putting you in there. I want my brother to bring you in. <laughs> Finish that video because then I want to go to the video called Heritage of Hate. Well, that's a, actually not a video, but it's actually an uh, article. Go ahead. Cause memory of the war from people who will always choose to see it through the personal. And I think the UDC, to a great extent, was that was their goal. So the next time someone says the Confederate monuments are about remembering our history, just know that that's exactly what the United Daughters of the Confederacy wants you to think. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth